How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at some practice problems for empirical formulas from analysis. So number one, a nitrogen oxide is 63.65% by mass nitrogen. What is the empirical formula? So it's saying we have a nitrogen oxide and they don't know in what proportion those things are. But they do know 63.65% of it is nitrogen by mass. So whenever you're dealing with percents, it's nice to make assumptions. Like let's say we had 100 grams. Well, in that case, I would have 63.65 grams of nitrogen and the rest of it would be oxygen. So I just do 100 minus 63.65 and I end up with 36.35 grams of oxygen. So now we have what the masses would be for a 100 gram sample. Now we can convert that to moles. So you go, all right, I know that one mole of nitrogen is 14.01 grams. So now my grams cancel out and I'll end up with moles of nitrogen. When I do that, I plug and chug, beep bop, beep bop, boop, I get 4.543 moles. I do the same process for oxygen. I know that one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams. Grams cancel out. And I plug and chug and I get beep up, beep up, boop, 2.272 moles of oxygen. So now I have a ratio between the two, but it's not in the form of an empirical formula, right? We're looking for the most simplified numbers. I can't put like N subscript 4.543, O subscript 2.272. That doesn't make it. No, we're not doing that. So how are we going to simplify them? Well, you look for the smallest number of mol moles which in this case is 2.272. And you divide all of the rest of them by that number. So when I do it for oxygen, I end up with one. That's a one. And when I do that for nitrogen, I end up with two. So now I have a whole number ratio. My empirical formula is N2O. That's the process. What is the empirical formula of a compound that has all of those percentages for those things, right? So let's, let's break it down. I got sulfur, I got oxygen, I got chlorine. I'm going to assume I have 100 grams, so I can say I have 27.0 grams of sulfur. I have 13.4 grams of oxygen, and I have 59.6 grams of chlorine. So same process. Look up the gram form formula mass for sulfur. So one mole of sulfur is 32.07 grams. Grams cancel out. I plug and chug and I get 0 0.8419. Do the same process for oxygen. One mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams. Grams cancel out and I end up with uh, 0. 0.8375 moles for both of those. And then I do the same process, but for carbon. So one mole, oh, not carbon, chlorine. One mole of chlorine is 35.45 grams. Grams cancel out. I plug and chug and I get 0 0.837. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the last one. I get like 1.68. So now I have to simplify all these. So I'm going to find the smallest number and divide everything by that. So smallest number is this 0.8375. So I'm going to divide every number by 0.8375. And I get almost exactly one for that. So I'm going to just round it to one. I get exactly one for oxygen and I get two for chlorine. So the empirical formula would be S1, O1, Cl2. And if you didn't want to write those ones, you don't have to. Uh, I was just showing you. So yeah. Number three, what is the empirical formula of compound that is this, all this stuff? So again, write it out. I have carbon, I have hydrogen, I have oxygen. Assume 100 grams. I have 52.1 grams of carbon. I have 13.1 grams of hydrogen and I have 34.7 grams 
of oxygen. So again, look up the gram formula mass for each of these elements. Carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. Um, so, yeah. So I do 52.1 divided by 12.01. And beep, pop, beep, pop, boop. I end up with 4.338 moles of carbon. Hydrogen. One mole of hydrogen is 1.01 grams. Grams cancel out. I end up with 12.97 moles of hydrogen. And then I do the same process for oxygen. One mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams. Do that, plug and chug, and you get 2.16875. Then you go, all right, let me find the smallest number in moles. And it's for oxygen. So I'm going to divide everything by 2.16875. For oxygen, I get 1. Divide 12.97 by 2.16875. And I get six ish and 4.338 moles divided by again 2.16875 and i get almost exactly two so my empirical formula would be c2 h6 o let's do another one a particular alcohol contains only three elements carbon hydrogen and oxygen combustion of a 30 gram sample of the alcohol produces that much co2 and that much H2O determine its empirical formula. All right, so if I'm combusting some compound, I'm reacting it with oxygen, and I'm making CO2 and H2O. Always. So, well, carbon, how are we going to figure out how much carbon there is? You're going to look at the CO2, because all of the carbon ended up in CO2. Hydrogen, how are you going to figure out how much hydrogen there was? Well, all of the hydrogen ended up in H2O. So you're going to take a look at H2O. Oxygen, it's a little trickier, right? Because oxygen could have come from the atmosphere, the gas that it burned with, or it could have come from the compound. So you're going to have to use that 30 gram sample that you started with. So you're going to have to do that 30.00 minus however many grams of hydrogen you determine there to be and the grams of carbon you determine there to be. So let's do this. It's a long problem. Stick with me. So for carbon, where's that CO2 stuff? 57.30 grams of CO2. Well, I'm going to have to figure out the gram formula mass for CO2. And I'm mad. TV movie magic right here. It's 44.01 grams is one mole of CO2. So that'll give me moles of CO2. So now I got to go, all right, well. How many moles of carbon do I get from that? Well, one mole of CO2 is only going to give me one mole of carbon. Mr. Drowney, are you just times them by one? Yeah, I am. All right. Just bear with me. We've got to take care of units. CO2 cancel out. When we do all that, I end up with 1.302 moles of carbon. So similar process for water. Um, 35.22 grams of H2O. So let me start by writing that out. 35.22 grams of H2O. Again, formula mass for H2O is 18.02 grams per one mole. So now my grams cancel out and I got moles of H2O. But check this out. This is why I bothered multiplying by one. For every one mole of H2O, we get two moles of hydrogen. Right, because it's H2O. So I plug and chug, and I do that math. I get 3.909 moles of hydrogen. All right, so to figure out how many moles of oxygen we got, we need to first get grams of carbon. So I take this 1.302 moles, and I times it by that 12.01, and I get... 15.64 grams of carbon. I times the moles of hydrogen by 1.01 grams per mole. And I end up with 3.948 grams of hydrogen. So to figure out how much oxygen we got, it's going to be 30.00 grams 
minus 15.64 grams and the 3.948 grams of hydrogen. That's going to give me 10.41 grams of oxygen. Times that by one mole over 16.00 grams, and you end up with 0 0.6508 moles of oxygen. We're not done yet because it wants the empirical formula. That's what it's asking for. We now have moles of each element. So you got to divide by the smallest number, which is going to be this 0 0.6508. So let's see if I got room C, H, O. When I do that many moles divided by 0 0.6508, I end up with two carbons. So C2. Hydrogen, that 3.909 divided by 0 0.6508, and I end up with 6. So C2H6, and then oxygen divided by itself is just 1. So final answer for this terribly long problem, C2H6O. Hope you found it helpful. Okay, bye.